Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I have my January wrap up. There's a few books here, so if I've recorded a review or intend to record a review, then I won't necessarily talk about that book as much. The first book that I read in January was Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. This was the third time rereading this book within the last year. It's a humorous memoir regarding anxiety and depression. And as it's a reread, I don't really feel the need to talk about it because obviously I reread it. I liked it enough to have read it three times in the last year, so I think that speaks for how much I enjoy to read this book. Next, I read Commonwealth by Anne Patchett. I've already recorded a review for this, so I will link that somewhere. Then I read The World Without Us by Muriel Zhukao. Again, this book talks about the family after the middle child has died and it discusses the family's grief. The mother was originally this almost hippie bohemian girl from a cult and the cult was burned to the ground and she has memory issues. My biggest problem with this book is that there are so many things that would have worked better had they been more fleshed out. Tess, the child, I believe she's now the eldest child, has stopped talking and she hasn't spoken for six months and again if we're looking into metaphor and imagery here then her not talking was this great thing again of she is actually physically unable to tell the bees and we all know about the folklore surrounding bees there's also the fact that the child who has died you get the sense she was almost the queen of this hive and that Zhukao is trying to show us what happens when the hive is thrown into disarray. The cult is another hive. You could say that them moving to this farm is them tra and becoming a family is being moved to a different hive. How the father is killing Queen um, and replacing them. It could also be related to this daughter. And there is a lot in here regarding imagery. That's probably the best thing for it, and I do like being able to read into books and think about these things. I just, again, wish this book could be more fleshed out. Flight Behaviour by Barbara Kingsolver was a much better book. I did buy this book because of the cover, and I still haven't got rid of it, even though I said that I might, because after having read it and recorded my review, I began to notice about things that had happened in this book more and how it may be related to this whole thing of the hive. But then again, I do actually wish that the book had been better. I wish it had been more fleshed out because it did feel like a lot of pieces that didn't actually come together for a satisfying conclusion. Okay, so my dad and my brother came home and now the dryer's on, so we're going to have a bit of background noise. Anyway, think of it like Muzak, theme music, the dirge to my soul. So the next book that I read I have already recorded a review for I just haven't uploaded it yet and that is Homegoing by Yar Jesse. Everyone was talking about this book last year it's what made me buy this copy in June and then it took me till now to read it so I could have waited for the UK edition to come out but this is a truly tremendous book. I think that's a brilliant debut novel. In contrast to the other two books I liked spending only a certain amount of time with these few characters and then seeing how things had moved on with the next generation and yes there were characters who I'd wished I'd seen more of but I think that that was something of the appeal was the fact that you didn't get to see these characters for so long you just got this snapshot of their life but also what had made them this way and affected the generations further down the line. I also liked that Jesse took this typical form of the main character being one character and switched it up to the main characters actually this fa the family and the story is of the family and of uh, how a family changes and opinions change over centuries and generations. Obviously I thought it was tremendous. Next I read Let's Pretend It Never Happened by Jenny Lawson. This is the first book she wrote, this is a memoir and this is a book where I preferred the first half of the book to the second half of the book. I read Furiously Happy before I read this and I preferred Furiously Happy to this book, although I did enjoy reading about Jenny Lawson's life and finding out more about the people who you meet in the sequel and you get more of an idea of who these people are to Jenny. Yeah, great, easy, fun memoir to read. Next I read Talking with the Dead by Anne Caldwell. I can't honestly remember a poem within here that I actually liked. Next I read Hyperbole and Half by Ali Brosh, which is obviously based on the blog. A lot of people have read this, a lot of people enjoy this. 
I'm not one of them. I liked it, I thought there were funny bits in it, but ultimately I feel like and it seems that a lot of these are just recycled blog posts and I think that if you enjoy Ellie Brush and you enjoy Hyperbole and a Half you're going to get a lot more out of this book than I did but it, ultimately I didn't enjoy this book. I read it in one sitting, although it looks quite thick it is made up of comic strips and so yeah if you get towards the end of the year and you're looking to fulfil your Goodreads reading goal grab this book and just read it and get it out of the way and yeah Ellie Brush talks about depression and all that fun stuff but it's just not the type of humour I really enjoy, I'm sorry. Next I read Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. This is a book that com confounds me in how I feel about it. You begin with this woman telling you that she has the final book in a, a fictional cosy crime series that has been popular, it's one of the big crime series throughout the world, talking about this character of Atticus Pund who is very much like Hercule Poirot and this man wrote the books exactly how books were written in the golden age of cosy crime. Oh yeah, Alan, Alan Conway, this fictional best-selling de detective wrote these books and you get the first part of that book included in here and then it goes on to the second half of the book told from this woman's point of view who is his editor and the final chapters are missing and so she begins digging around looking for it and really, to me, it just seemed like a way for Anthony Horowitz to talk about himself. And I couldn't help but feel like Anthony Horowitz was just going around saying, look what I did. He mentions Foyle's War, he mentions Midsummer Murders. That are his creations. And maybe he wrote them to, to avoid any sort of, you know, like, slanderous, libelous court cases. But really, I wish there'd just been stories about Atticus Pun, because the story about the the story about the woman just never seemed to work. It, ne it didn't work for me. I didn't think that she was a fully realised character. In fact, I didn't think that of any of the characters. I felt like Anthony Horowitz had been asked for a book, had promised a book and he came up with this. And it's like, it tries to do this thing of there being a mystery about this missing manuscript, but ultimately it failed for me. I felt disappointed at the end of this book really. It very much left me feeling, is that it? I didn't care about the cosy crime portion and I really enjoy cosy crime but I just, I didn't think that Horowitz had written it well. I wish, again, that more focus had been put into both parts of this and that it had been better edited and it just wasn't for me. Next I read the throwback special by Chris Backelder. The story follows this group of men who go and recreate this n tragedy that happened at a football game in which a man's leg was broken and it's a stuck tale of middle-aged men and it focuses on middle-aged men and what their lives are like and as they and they're trying to recapture their youth and the only way they think that they can do this is by recreating this football game and everything hinges on this football game going correctly for them to be able to live their lives properly and I felt like it in some ways I thought it was brilliant, I thought it was humorous, I thought it was a great thing to show how fragile masculinity actually is, that these men believe that should they play this really manly football game that they're going to end up suddenly have their masculinity back and it won't matter whether their son's gay or their children are doing things that they think are weird. These men, none of them uh, have any assuredness about them, all of them feel like they're failing at something and I question whether that's really, whether the main thing was that the men recreate this bone breaking simply because they want there to be some sort of physical symbol of the pain they're going through and the anguish that they really shouldn't be feeling. Next I read Paulina and Fran by Rachel B. Glazer and I recorded a video of this in which I swore quite a lot but I absolutely hated this book and I mean like, I actually hate that this book is still in my house, I've just not got anywhere to get rid of it yet. I really, really hate this book. Next I listened to The Light Fantastic by Terry Pratchett on Audible and I'm really enjoying these audiobooks. Terry Pratchett is one of the most humorous writers I have ever listened to. I mean, I've, I've read the Truckers Diggers Wings series before and really enjoyed that, but this is a completely different thing. The Discworld series is a brilliant series. It's so humorous. It takes tropes from all of the fantasy canon and twists them in very funny ways and it's great to listen to. It's like listening to radio for to radio plays and I enjoy them 
so much, and I'm hoping, and I'm hoping to finish listening to Equal Rights quite soon, and trying to get more of them read and absorbed, because I really do think that these books are fantastic. Next I read Tanti Diabless by Fawzia Kane. This is a poetry collection. I thought that this collection was just great, and I read the entire thing, and yes there are certain things that if you are a white British person you aren't going to know but and also I think it's great when poets do this and that you can go and you can look things up because it makes the poems more personal and it makes them work really well and if it's going to work for the poem then by all means do it. Tanti Diabless is a second part to this so you have a lot of poems that aren't related to that at the start that are brilliant and then you have Tanti Diabless which to me just worked similar in like a similar fashion to Crow by Ted Hughes in that you had all of these stories of this character doing their thing and I really enjoyed this and is one that I'm going to be revisiting in the future. Next I read What Belongs to You by Garth Greenwell. This story follows this unnamed narrator who meets a male sex worker called Mitko and follows this man's obsession with this sex worker and I'm not sure how I feel about this book because I feel like it just focused on this really tragic relationship that you knew could never work out well and that there was more emphasis on the prose and although I did like the way that Greenwell wrote and the difference in style and the almost poetic way he writes, that 41 page paragraph I say that I like when people experiment with prose and he does give a reason for experimenting with the prose and I can admit that at some points it does work because you can, as a reader, can end up feeling a bit lost and disconnected as he deals with something that he's dealing with within the novel but ultimately I don't actually think that this book works in a cohesive fashion and I think that more thought once again should have been put into the story rather than showing off with your storytelling. Next I listened to The Gospel of Loki on Audible. Again this book is fantastic, it is extremely humorous. Joanne Harris's book Rune Mark was the first book of hers that I read and details the world after Ragnarok has happened and that has all of the gods after you see in Ragnarok and then there's also Rune Light that I haven't read yet, but they have just re-released Rune Marks with a cover similar to this that I'm questioning going and buying because it has been re-edited and I'd like to see how it works ten years down the line. But The Gospel of Loki is a very humorous take on what Loki thought about what went on during the prose edda and all of the events within Norse mythology from his point of view and how he felt about it and listening to it was brilliant because again it worked the same way that the Discworld books have worked in that I found them I found the book increasingly humorous each chapter is like episodic it works in an episodic fashion so again it gave me the feeling of it being similar to a radio play which made me more able to immerse myself in the story definitely one that I think people should pick up if they want in an introduction into Norse mythology. Next I read Sleeping on Jupiter by Anurada Roy. This book begins with this horrible slaughter of this young girl's family. This slaughter has happened, it then skips into the future and tells you about these three women who are travelling to Jarmuli and this young woman who they meet along the way who it then turns out is the same young girl who from the slaughter at the start of the book. This book is really well written and then it ends. And I just mean it ends in the middle of the story, like I feel like Anurada Roy must have been on a deadline or something and she wasn't meeting it so she just decided I'll quickly throw in this climax, I'll end the book and then I'll be done with it because lord this book just ends out of nowhere, like there's no build up to it, it's like it, it's slowly building up to something and you get absolutely no answers at the end of the book and you know you can leave questions unanswered and threads dangling at the end of books but not in the way she Annie Rader Roy did it this book just ends it ends out of nowhere at all like you feel like there should be another 200 pages to wrap the story up and to properly ex examine these people's lives and someone just found out that their son's actually in the town but then it turns out we're not going to follow that plot point at all and then there's this fight but none of the plot points that she builds at the end actually come to anything and everything ends with them reaching a beach but there's no point of them reaching the beach at this point because there's no need for them to be there because we haven't reached that part of the story. Well in the end uh, it really, the ending of this book really, really spoiled it for me because there was some excellent prose within here and I'm just sad that it had to end the way it did. And finally I read The Fisherman by Jigozi Obioma 
and again this book we always knew was going to disappoint me because I went into this book with such high hopes for a story that was going to show me great things about African storytelling and I know I noticed the things to do with fairy tales and everything I just I, I'm not sure what I thought about this story I enjoyed the tale of brotherhood and when it began I was powering through this book because I really enjoyed hearing from this character's point of view and seeing these points in Nigerian history. I liked the main character, I liked his relationship with his brothers, I have, I have three brothers and a sister and I enjoyed this aspect that Obioma managed to capture of their relationships with one another and how Ben looked up to his older brothers. And the main focus of this plot switched to one of the brothers being told something by the local madman that made him incredibly anxious, incredibly suspicious of the other of the other brothers and really changed their relationship, which I imagine, you know, you could guess that was going to happen. Changes in relationships happen throughout all novels, but then on the one hand I can really understand what these characters end up doing because I think that should anything have happened to my older siblings I may have reacted in a similar fashion, however I don't think I would have been able to go so far as far as these characters do, and maybe it is just amping something up and overemphasizing it for the points of literature to emphasise the love that these characters and these brothers feel for each other and how they're unable to cope with the shift in their worlds, but the more I stand here and think about this book the more I think that I'm not actually disappointed in it because it is a tragedy and it is meant to, the things that happen are meant to be things that actually do happen, but still these weren't the things that I wanted to happen to the characters but that's not my that's not my decision as a reader that's the author's decision and maybe it's more because they are the things that would have happened rather than what I think should happen and that's a great discussion to have about literature but it's not the one we should be having about this book either way I didn't actually end up enjoying this book as much as I thought I would enjoy it and I'd been looking for something completely different, I'd been looking for something that had a bit of magical realism basically and I didn't get that and I don't know whether that's just, just because I saw it recommended on Jen Campbell's channel so I thought that but then I did enjoy all the stuff about the fairy tales and I did enjoy the way that Obioma writes so it's one of those strange things that I enjoyed the writing, I enjoyed the character and in, ultimately I thought that it's actually a great tragedy and that these characters worked in ways that they would work and I think that it's a really good emphasis on brotherhood and and the things we do for our family members so maybe it is actually a great book I mean it got shortlisted for the booker and I did enjoy it and I'm gonna keep it so maybe that's a sign I don't know make of that what you will anyway they're all of the books that I read in January what did you read this month have you read any of these books do you want to discuss them in the comments would you like to see reviews for any of these books specifically if so ask the questions down below and I might deliver I might not Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, that is all.